There are three reasons why people usually fail in life and especially in selling. The first reason is they don't have compelling enough reasons to really give themselves the energy or the boost to really go out there and use all of their skills. There are a lot of very, very talented people in the world who never really tap that full potential just because they don't have enough reasons to. They're uh, in lack of wants, if you will. We talked about selling as motivation, and motivation is giving people wants, reasons to do things. A lot of people just don't have those. And weak wants is probably the biggest killer of dreams and sales success you can ever imagine. So that's why we spent quite a bit of time here after we did the overview of selling, having you work on developing some real wants, some reasons to go out there and really do it. The second challenge and the second key to failure in life and in selling is limiting belief systems. Beliefs that shut off the possibility before you even begin. Uh, we talked a little bit about to the four minute mile and people's belief that the human body couldn't even go that fast. And as a result, most people didn't even attempt it. Or if they did, they thought they were giving 100%, but they really weren't. All they needed was one person to show it was really possible. So limiting beliefs, second major key to failure in life and in selling. And then the third one is the inability to consistently manage your state when the going gets tough. And I think there are a lot of salespeople who do get excited and are motivated and have some very big goals and do have good beliefs, but all of a sudden they miss out on this third one. A lot of people think having a great attitude, as so many people call it, being in a good state consistently, they think that's uh, having a bank account. That's not state, that's a bank account. Anybody can feel good when there's plenty of money in the bank and everybody around them is treating them well and everybody's treating them like they love them and everything is perfect. The difference between success and failure in the quality of people's lives is their ability to take tough situations, situations that take the traditional individual and just drive them to emotions like despair and discouragement and be able to literally convert those emotions very quickly, very easily into emotions that empower them. So I want you to think about this. What are the consequences if you don't manage your state? Before we even talk about how to do it, let's talk about why to do it. Because like in anything else I've talked to you about, why to, I believe, is 80%. And how to is the 20%. You've got to know the how to. That's clear. But you've got to know why to more importantly. Because I've taught people how to manage their states and been blown away by them not being able to manage their state in a situation even though they knew how. But isn't that true of anything in life? People know how to do something and they still don't do it simply because they don't have a big enough why, they don't have enough reasons. So to help you do that, let's use our normal motivating and selling technique on ourselves. Let's look at what pain will result if we don't manage our states. So I got a question for you. What will happen if you don't consistently manage your states? If after, for example, a major disappointment, you really, you know, revel in it, what will happen to your next sales call? Will you be in a state that will support you in being at your peak and really making a difference with that customer or client? I seriously doubt it. What are the consequences of those things? Well, not only do you lose a sale, but you start to feel lousy and you start momentum in another direction. I mean, think about this. Have you consistently managed your state every single time you're in front of a customer? I doubt it. Have you done it 90% of the time? For most people, I doubt it. For most people, state management is something they kind of just gloss over and go, yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel pretty good, let's just go do it. But I don't know if that's enough. I think that what's really important for us in life and in selling is to really take a look at our states and make sure we're getting the most out of ourselves. And I'm not saying you can't get discouraged, and I'm not saying never get down, and I'm not saying become what I call a permagrinner. Those kind of people that are always like this, and you go, how's it going? They go, fine. You go, what are you doing? They go, I don't know, but it feels good. That's not what I'm suggesting. I'm not talking about just being crazed. I'm talking about being intelligent. And managing your state is being intelligent. It isn't just being all uppity. It's being intelligent because you know that, hey, I have a right to feel bad about this, but if I feel bad, it's not gonna make it better. So the question is, what do I need to do to turn things around? Instead of just feeling bad, what do I need to turn around and put my focus on what I'm gonna do instead of the emotion of disappointment, discouragement, frustration, anger, or whatever. Does that make sense so far? So we've got to really give ourselves enough reasons to manage our state. I'm going to give you that as homework. That'll be one of your assignments here, is to really get it compelling enough that you're willing to manage your state when it's not easy. Again, everybody does it when it's easy. It's when it's tough. That's what separates those who succeed versus those that just get by. How do we manage our states? And why? Well, one why, again, I have to mention is the state you're in determines your behavior and your performance. All performance, whatever we do, is state related. If you're in a lousy state, emotionally, mentally, or physically, it's going to affect the way you affect other people. 
And since you and I are paid for performance, we better manage our state so that we can put ourselves in a place where we enjoy ourselves and we earn and we produce the results that we're in business to do. What people do is based on a state that they're in at any moment in time. And obviously, we can be in all kinds of states and that's why we can have all kinds of behavior. Have you ever looked at somebody and you saw somebody do something and you got really upset? Like, how could they do that? How could they treat me so harshly? And I've never even met this person before. One of the things to remember is, have you ever snapped at somebody when it had nothing to do with them? And for most of us, the answer is yes. We're not really happy about it, but there have been times we've snapped at maybe our children or a stranger, and it was just the state we're in. Our behavior was about the state. It was not about them.